Hello everyone, welcome back. So last episode we made the character manager, and we also established the fact that we can configure our characters with different settings that customize their color, their alias, what type they are, and whatever font they use, whatever else you want to put in there. It's all going to be controlled through the character configuration asset, which is defined as default through the dialogue system configuration, which is a configuration for the whole system in its entirety. Now, we ended off where we can create the characters, and we could see that by all of the character classes being instantiated and the proper messages coming up. So it's able to determine the right type for the right character and get their configuration, but we're not actually doing anything further than that because the classes have no logic to them. So before we get into sprite characters and all those fancy ones, we're going to start basic and just do some small things for our text characters. What we're going to do today is make it where a text character can actually speak on screen. And we'll do this by giving the character a say command. We know that speaking is going to be universal for every character, so logically this function should be what's inside the base class for the character. This is going to be a function called say, and we'll want two of them. We'll want one that just takes a single line, and one that takes a list of lines. That way it's easy to use for the developer and the, the writer. So we can do this as a public void called say, which takes a single string, and we'll do nothing right now, which will be the dialogue, and then another version called public void say, which takes a list of string for the dialogue. And so what this say is going to do is simply convert our dialogue to a list, so we'll reference the other say command and then make a new list of strings and populate it with the only line of dialogue that we have and just call it that way. So that just makes it easier for us instead of specifying a new list anytime we want to say one line, we just have to say one line. Now what's the point of this you might ask? Aren't we just going to run all this through the dialogue file? We've already got the text system working. It's already sending stuff straight to the dialogue system. So why do we need to create a say method for a character to do the same thing that the conversation manager is handling automatically? Well, this is mostly for an external use case, something where you're not running dialogue files and you're just creating characters, but you still want them to be able to speak easily by having a native speak command inside of the character class. So one thing that I like to do is when I make systems like this, I like to make it where you can, you're not enforced to use it for one particular project. So characters in the dialogue system, I often use for external projects outside of visual novels. And so the say command will allow me to just create some random character and tell them to say something and it just works. So this is an option. If this is not important to you, go ahead and skip this. It doesn't matter. Um, but for those of you who may want this external functionality, here it is. This is how we're going to do it. Just be aware if you do decide to skip this video, then some code may look slightly different when you come back to later videos, such as the return type of say for the dialogue system. We're about to change that to a coroutine. So here's what we're going to do. We're not going to do anything in this function right now. What we're going to do right now is head back to our dialogue system and make it where it returns a coroutine whenever we call any type of speak method from it. That way, if we ever tell the dialogue system to say something from any other script, we immediately have a coroutine that we can yield for and wait for that conversation to end without having to go dig into the conversation manager and see, hey, is it building? No, we already get a coroutine returned to us automatically. So for dialogue system, we've got two variants here, just the same as we had for the regular character. So we're going to change this void return type to a coroutine. That way we'll get our, that way we'll get our loop and we will return say for the list, which will also make return a coroutine. And this is going to return whatever the conversation manager returns when we start the conversation. Right now it's not doing anything, it's just that's another void. So let's go to conversation where we start that and turn this into a coroutine. After we create the process, then let's go ahead and 
return the process. This allows us an easy way to define a list of lines and simply wait until the dialog finishes speaking and then continue on with events. Again, for some external use case outside of dialog files. And the logic, of course, running exactly how you would expect, going through each line, and then once we finish, we proceed with the rest of the logic. And so what this then allows us to do is within the character, we can change void to a coroutine return. And then we can simply return the dialog, dialog system dot instance dot say, followed by whatever dialog is passed in. And that enables us to create a character, define some lines that they'll say, and then instead of referencing the dialog system, we'll just reference Ellen, the character. As long as I am to move that in the right spot, that is, right here. So then we just reference the character dot say, and we get the same result. We create Ellen, and now we have dialog that is running by telling her to speak. But we don't have the name showing up. And it wouldn't be intuitive to include a name and dialogue formatting when we're telling a character to say something. We just want to feed in dialogue alone, which means we'll set the name separately. Doing that is easy if we come back into the character class. But since we're going to be referencing the dialogue system more than once now, let's go ahead and make a pointer to it. Then we'll say public dialogue system, and we'll call this the dialogue system, and just point that to the dialogue system dot instance. Okay, so then whenever we speak, we'll say dialogue system dot say, but before we do that, dialogue system dot show speaker name, followed by the name of this character. But of course, if you remember from the character data casting video, we can specify who we want a character to speak as, so that way they can operate under a different name until we decide to show their true name. And so we'll define that up here using public string display name. And by default, the display name is just going to be equal to the name until we assign it to something else. So instead of saying name here, we'll go ahead and say display name. That way, if we use casting data for the character, we can display whoever it is we want to show them as. Doing that now allows us to see the character name and as well as the dialog simply by calling say straight from the character class that was instantiated. So I could then come in and just make a couple other characters. Say Adam is Adam. And then Sarah is a new character called Sarah. And we'll give some new lines to Adam here. And for Sarah as well. Running in Unity, we create all of our text characters, and it's going to go ahead and run through every one of these characters one by one, yielding for however long their dialog lasts. So that's a simple way of just creating characters and calling a speak method directly from them in case you're using this outside of a visual novel scenario, which I've found to be helpful quite a few times. So that's the end of this video, we're done with that, and in the next video we're going to go ahead and put our configurations to use and start customizing the color and the font of the characters.